So Rima is asking, um, what's your biggest takeaway from season one? Honestly, it's it's how uh, many people bought into the show. Uh, there were people who said, really, English podcast in Saudi Arabia, but you know, you guys speak Arabic. What are you doing speaking English? You know, who's your audience? We hear it all the time. You are what you eat. One of the reasons why we partnered up with Eska Basket. They were founded by Eska Farms on the principle that healthy food grown and cultivated locally and sustainably is an essential part of healthy living. So Eska Basket has these four pillars, which they take a great deal of pride in. Quality, clean and fresh produce, environment, seasonality and locality, fair trade, ethics and fair treatment. And finally, empowerment, transparency and support. So this is what the homepage looks like. It's super user friendly. It took me about three minutes to sign up. You've got these four simple steps to follow to see your order through. And now for the fun part, start shopping. As I touched on earlier, everything is super user friendly, laid out in just a few clicks. You have put together your basket that is fresh from harvest. Bismillah rahman rahim Welcome to the Mo Show podcast. Today we have a very special episode. It's the Saudi National Day episode. And today the tables have turned. You're in the in the guest, guest chair. <laughs> chair. I'm in the interviewer chair. So we have something very special today for everyone. Um, we are going to get to know uh, Mo behind the Mo Show podcast. And uh, we did something very special where we asked his 35 guests to send out questions. Some of them replied, some of them not yet. We're too busy. We're too busy. <laughs> um, so we have a few questions uh, that we're going to go through. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, you can always put in the comments any questions that they want to know about you and you will gladly answer. For sure. Uh, but today we're going to do a few things that came from your uh, beloved guests. Mm -hmm. and, and, and from you, Mr. Inaugurator. Um, yes, I was episode number one. Uh, How good does it feel to say that? A year, it's, a year it's, <laughs> uh, honestly, seeing you now with the success that you have and all of that, I'm super proud of you, Mo. Habibi. And uh, I mean, I, I know you're going to go to places with this thing. You're already there, um, but uh, still. Thank you. I don't take that lightly. It means it means a lot to me. Type. So we're going to start with episode four and episode 30. Uh, Marim Musalli and Dani Agil. Mm -hmm. um, they have a question that is very similar. For, for the record, I haven't seen those questions. They were communicated to you. So Perfect. Godspeed. Type. So uh, what made you want to tell people's stories? What made me want to tell other people's stories? Absolutely. Um, I think it all stemmed more from uh, our, our country being misunderstood. You know, um, you know, whenever I travel as a youngster, when I was in school in the UK or in the US, uh, you know, when I'd say that I'm from Saudi Arabia, that, you know, double take, like almost take their glasses off. So what? Just, where are you, you from? You, you grew up where? Well, I, I grew up in, in Saudi up until the age of uh, 11. Okay. And then my family shipped me off to the UK. Okay. So it actually started from there. So you the went to boarding school? Boarding school. Yeah. Okay. Boarding school in the UK. I was 11 years old. Rugby school? Uh, well, we played rugby. I was a school called Papelwick mm -hmm. uh, in Ascot, next to the race course, the famous race course. Um, so, you know, I used to get a lot of, are you really from Saudi Arabia? You know? So I think it was like a complexity that I carried from a younger age. Okay. That fast forward 23, 24 years later, I was like, you know what? I am not convinced by how our country is represented abroad. And if I can just amplify the, are you really from Saudi? And I give them my answer. If I can amplify that to whoever listens to this podcast, I can change the perception of Saudi Arabia. And it starts with, let me hear your story. You know, amazing things happen in Saudi by, by Saudis. Let me spread your story, whether it's Delma Malhas, the, you know, the horseback rider, the show jumper, uh, or, or whether it's Uthman um, al-Mullah, the golfer, or it's, it's never ending. Like, I mean, everyone that I had comes with a story. And I just wanted to amplify that to the world who never really had the right idea about us Saudis. Taib, how do you choose your guests? Um, I think that's the hardest part. 
choosing choosing the right guests. Alhamdulillah, I don't feel like I you know made any mistakes in any guests that I did choose. Um, you know, I think it, it comes down to having a story. Like, you know, what is what is your story? Your sister climbed Everest. She was episode three. You know, she was like the first name, the brand name. Raha, to me, is a brand name. She was the first brand name that agreed to come on the show. Uh, and it was actually hard to fill her shoes in the next couple of episodes because, you know, you only have one first Saudi to climb Everest. But it was from when I had Raha on that I realized, now I need to have people that come with a unique story that other people would be interested to hear and it makes interesting content. Type. By the way, the hardest thing is choosing the guest. Once the conversation starts, it, it just it just keeps rolling. But choosing the... It, it, it feels very weird for me to be on this side of the table. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, you're, you're stuck there for the next hour. So. It's, 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 not, it's not easy. So, so It's quite let, refreshing for me, by the way, to be on this side. Really? Okay, yeah. good. I, I love Sorry. your sweater, by the way. Thanks, yeah. I, yeah. I still don't have that. No, I'll send you some. Uh, so, to your, to your Gareth, match. from episode five. Um, is asking what habit is most responsible for your growth in the last 12 months months sorry um, I was always worried about what people think about me you know and it was never my intention to go public with it, with anything like all my social media accounts are, are private I enjoy public speaking yes I always did but I remember when I was uploading your episode the first one I was at home it was around you know 10 p.m. which one episode one <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's an inside joke so, yeah, it's, brilliant. it's not inside anymore um, so, so once YouTube was like you know 10, 9, 8 and boom you're, you're there in my mind I'm like oh my god people are going to judge me you know how am I going to take people's criticism of, of me and my product or you know the, the Mo Show podcast is it going to be ridiculed are people going to take it seriously but as the episodes progressed I realized that everyone's going to have an opinion, you know, some, I don't know, you know, one podcaster said that in a room of, of 10 people, not everyone's going to love you. Absolutely. All right? And when you put yourself in public, you have to also go by that same narrative that not everyone's going to love you. And that's okay. You have to be okay with not everyone appreciating your content. But guess what? There's going to be a lot of people that, that do appreciate you and value what you do. Uh, to answer Gareth's question, I think I grew the most in not 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 caring about what people think because I still do, but I think not letting people's opinions affect me the way it used to before I started this. Type. Is that a good answer? There is no good or bad. <laughs> there is your answer. You are quite the moderator. So, so Mashur, um, who is the dear friend, uh, was asking, uh, what sort of responsibilities do you feel towards representing your kingdom in the best way possible to the world. Mm. And he touched upon that, mashallah, you currently have more than 100K followers. So what sort of responsibilities do you have or do you feel you have with this platform? Mm. I think when, when you have any platform, Mo, whether it's 1,000, 10,000 or a million, it comes with responsibility, all right? Yeah. Um, You'd be you'd be su surprised. Um, he plays for a team that I'm not a fan of, but I really respect him as a human being. LeBron James. Okay, he's a person that. From he plays for who? He plays for the Lakers. The Lakers. So from the age Wasn't of eighteen, he with the Cleveland. Uh, he was with Cleveland for the longest time, okay. and then he went to Miami. All right. And then now he's with the Lakers. Okay. I appreciate this guy as a human being. At, at Mo Mo is a very very huge fan of the Celtics. Celtics, yeah, Just basketball. So you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Throw it out there. Um, so LeBron, from the age of 18, Mo, he was in the spotlight, all right? And he has never put a foot wrong. He never got in trouble with the law, never had any issues that many of these, you know, NBA stars or professional athletes that come into money find themselves getting into trouble for. He's never put a foot wrong. Um, and, and he always talks about the responsibility that comes with having an audience and a platform because you have kids who look up, you know, to aspire to be like you. And not only kids, but people, you know, your own age, if they see you wearing something or eating something or drinking something, they're likely going to do the same. And I mean, in one year, you say 100,000 followers, that's an overnight, like an, an overnight following. Like I didn't even have enough time to, 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 to stop and smell the roses of, of, of how many people are, 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 are following me on, whether it's Instagram or YouTube. But I do recognize 
that it comes with a responsibility to showcase my country in the best possible light, which was the mission from day one. Like Bravo. I'm not adjusting to anything right now. Very nice. From when we sat down, when I had zero followers on any social media platform, the mission was when you asked me, why did you, start, why did you choose to start a podcast? I said, because I wanted to change the narrative of what the world thinks of the Saudi man on the street or women on the street. Beautiful. So I carry that, you know, today, tomorrow, and, you know, for however long uh, as I do this, and I hope it is, you know, for a very long time. That's, uh, that's a nice mission. Let's go to one of our racers. Oh. Rima Jafali. Oh, okay. So Rima is asking, what's your biggest takeaway from season one, which is... Today is actually our your anniversary. Yeah, um, well, a week and ago, I'm saying our. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I feel super involved. Well, you were. You inaugurated the show. Um, so mm. one year, mm. uh, mashallah, you moved from an office building to this beautiful studio. I wish I can. Maybe one day you'll take them around <laughs> yeah. and show them what's what's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, so Rima's asking. Um, What's your biggest takeaway from season one? And hopefully for many seasons to come. Honestly, it's it's how uh, many people bought into the show. Uh, there were people who said, really, English podcast in Saudi Arabia, but you know, you guys speak Arabic. What are you doing speaking English? You know, who's your audience? Uh, what 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 surprised me the most or my biggest takeaway, Mo, was how many uh, people from the Arab world were interested in Saudi. Now, initially, when I launched so it, so when you say Arab world, do you mean outside of Saudi? I mean, like the, the I mean, you know, the GCC, GCC uh, okay. in, including Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, okay. Iraq. I mean, Egypt and Iraq are my biggest markets. Okay, my biggest demographics on Instagram, Egypt and Iraq constitute about 30, 40 percent of the followers. That was unexpected. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't foresee that. My mission was to almost speak to the audience that I grew up with when I was shipped to England when I, at the age of 11. And then I did five years there. And then I went to the US and I did a couple of years over there. So I wanted to change what they thought of us. Little did I know that the platform will be changing what the Arab world thinks of us. For example, I think it was Raha's episode, episode three, one of the comments on YouTube, you know, I try not to read comments, but I end up doing that, uh, was, Oh, wow. I mean, so in Saudi, you can have a man and a woman in a room together who aren't married. And it came from a guy whose name was Ahmed something. So, you know, he obviously came from the Arab world. And, um, and I didn't respond, but he now has a different perspective of what's happening in Saudi yeah. today. You know, so I didn't think my biggest takeaway was that I didn't expect to generate such a big Arab following from the get-go. Okay. That, that came, came as a surprise. I mean, you know... Uh there is a, I'm not going to say the saying, but anyways. Mm. So, Jude Al Harthi. What's the saying? Bab al Najjar Dam al Makhlu. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you never know what's happening, you know, in your backyard. You know, yeah, yeah, true. Uh, so, Jude Al Harthi. One of my favorite episodes. Has, has a very interesting question. And I apologize for constantly looking at the computer because I need to see the Sorry. questions. What does the most show mean to you on a personal level? So uh, I know that question. you're super passionate about it and you've built this studio around that dream and you're super eloquent when it comes to speaking to people, you bring out the best out of people and your 35 episodes have been really insightful. Thank you. Um, Especially episode number one was just amazing. <laughs> um, he's paying me in sushi and tea bus <laughs> tonight. Um, <clears throat> what does it mean to you? I mean, I, we, we've spoken about this, yeah, beforehand. Mm. And uh, you're one of my best friends and we've spoken that you want to start a podcast and you want to go for it. J take us through the journey. Of, you know, we were speaking earlier and you said, just go for it and, you know, yeah. do whatever your dream is required, to whatever it is, mm -hmm. and go for it. So speak to me about that. <clears throat> I mentioned it a few times on, on an episode. Uh, we were locked down for a couple of months in Corona and I was watching the great Naval Ravikant on a podcast. Uh, and and ah. he said... 
he told you, he yeah. told me not to mention which podcast. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Naval kept saying, you know, uh, like it was like there was a common theme to his messaging, which is the human being is not is not meant to work nine to five. Um, the end of the industrial revolution is the beginning of the information revolution. We are sharing information today. Mm. Um, own a piece of a business, even if a small one, you know, don't rent out your time. Uh, another one which I really liked was uh, try to disconnect input with output. Okay, hours spent on a job should not equal money made. All right, Tim Ferriss wrote a book called The Four Hour Work Week. Yeah. Okay, and it's how to break away from the nine to five. You can work four hours a week and make more than a guy who's working 70 or 80 hours a week. It's not all about money, it's about finding your passion. Mm -hmm. So the Mo Show podcast. What does the Mo Show podcast listen to in terms of podcasts? So I have about four podcasts that I listen to religiously, and sometimes I'd hear an episode and hear it a second and third time, and maybe even sometimes take notes. Um, so Naval has this this podcast, um, uh, and he he churns out about one every two or three weeks. He's an example of someone that I listen to over and over again. Uh, again, the reason why I started this podcast was because of him. Um, Tim Ferriss, the Tim Ferriss show is, uh, is something that I'm actually, and what I love about how his podcasts go, I mean, first of all, I'm shocked that it goes two, two and a half hours, but the diverse guests that he brings in, like this last one that I was listening to yesterday was, uh, you know, about a guy talking about uh, the, the, the nature of, of psychedelics and then and, and how that has improved uh, people who suffer from you know bipolar Depression or dementia and... or whatever and he's talking about that for the longest time the lady that was on before the guy who I'm listening to now was talking about fungi and 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 the whole world of, of fu like <clears throat> mo it's so diverse so you don't know what you're gonna get you're gonna be introduced to a world you know nothing about um, Jordan Peterson and 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 his podcast I, I listen to uh, a lot and then a few uh, business podcasts just to you know be kept abreast with what's happening in the tech world and the business world uh, so at any given time I'm listening to three or four podcasts just so the rotation is uh, yeah any one after the other so you keep fresh try to be yeah um, what would you ask yourself on this table what would I ask myself on this table mm. um, wow more <laughs> take your time I can speak to the fans while you do it. We're here in the studio while Mo contemplates what question he's going to ask himself. You know what's a good question to ask yourself? Like, uh, 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 So let me ask you one question while you think about it, and okay. then you can ask yourself. So what does contentment look for you? When you stop comparing yourself to others. That's being content. Yeah, uh, you know, when, you, when you're proud of yourself, um, when you are living for today and you are not uh, sacrificing today for tomorrow and, you know, I got to do this today, I got to make this today so that I can enjoy tomorrow. I think comparing, your, comparing yourself to others is, uh, is, is detrimental and, and we all do it, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to do it a lot less. Um, I feel like I have been better. Um, but contentment, I think, is, uh, is peace you know, being happy with where you are, who you are, what you've done, who you're doing it with, you know, um, are you living the life where you are making the lives around you better? What will people say about you if you were gone tomorrow? I know it's a bit deep, but like, how would people remember you? Yeah. Would they miss you? Would they be like, oh God, that guy was heavy on the soul? Would, you know, so I think contentment is, is being happy with, your current state would you share your age 37 38 next month october 4th yeah happy birthday personal personal happy questions birthday. by the way <laughs> so tell me what's the question you would ask yourself i mean honestly it's it was actually the answer to your question is what is contentment what i would ask myself once a week is mo did you do enough during this last week for you to be proud of yourself?
for you to be happy with yourself? I don't think it's a question that I'll just ask myself once. I'd like to ask it like every Friday or every Saturday at the end of every week. What did you do this week that made you happy? What, 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 did, what bad decisions did you do this week that made you unhappy? And I think you always want to have the ones that made you happy outweigh significantly the ones that made you unhappy. Did you grow? Whose life did you touch? Whose life did you improve or make better? Would you like to share what your current career is? So I am um, in the oil and gas sector. Of course. And I've been there for 11 years. I hold a marketing position. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, I am there nine hours a day, five days a week. Uh, do, do I love it? Some days are better than others, you know? Um, Am I able to juggle, asking myself questions, am I able to juggle this and that? Yes, I am for now. Of course. What time is it? It's <clears throat> 9.30. Uh, where is my passion? This is my passion. Bravo. This is my passion. Uh, family? Uh, a wife. We've been married for going on eight years this March. Mashallah. And we have a four-year-old boy named Adam. Whom I played with today. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I actually you? remembered you when I went upstairs. He was like, I saw Ammu Mo. I'm like, no way. You were, did you tell him? Did he like, I'm Ammu Mo? You know, he knew me. He remembered, he, huh? He introduced me to all his toys. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, I mean, from a person level, I love the Mosho podcast and I'm not being biased at Thank you. all. I actually subscribe and I, I listen to all the episodes. Finally, you subscribed. Um, God. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to be on this side of the table. Thank you. Um, it's been real. It's been a pleasure. Um, any? Uh, I couldn't think of another person to do this. Thank you, Mo. Any parting words that you want to give? No, I think I, I, I spoke enough, Mo. Um, I mean, listen, this is... Uh, what I like about this is it's very dynamic. So if we did not deliver on today's episode, the special National Day episode, please tell us. I'm going to get you back next year for the... Of course, for <laughs> year two. I, I'm expecting that. Next By year. the way, that's an idea. Once a year, we, 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 we check in and we have an open mic session about wow. how was the last season. Yellow. You know, what, what are your takeaways? Ah, we're going to do that. So is each season going to be 35 episodes? It, the first one was. I don't want to, you know, be stuck to such a commitment, but 35 seems to be like a decent pace, which was one every 10 days. I so, think you should do it one every week. No, that's, I, I need to be doing this full time for me to do that. No. One every week? Yeah. Every seven days. Once a weekend or whatever, Tuesday, Wednesday, وخلص. there are so many interesting individuals True. There are. in Saudi. There are. I mean, we, we are on a trajectory that's just incredible. Do you know, no doubt about that, and especially with more tourists flooding in, you know, you can capture, you know, but the issue, what might stop me, Mo, is that whenever I want to shoot an episode, it has to happen in the studio. That's w which is a good thing. But What's bringing people? It can't be done like you know the way Nada Baish and bless her, how she has her. You need to interview like, her. In she promised me she's she's gonna come on yeah. the show. Can't wait, Nada. This is for you. Give me a date and time. Uh, so the way she does it is that it's done on Instagram Live and yeah. you know wherever you are. So so it her flexibility is easier. But for me, you have to bring them into the studio and then we gotta edit it and then translate it and then all, like it's it's a bit of a okay stretch, but. You know what? I will push myself, and I appreciate that that comment. Yeah, and maybe I do churn out four we, episodes a month. Yeah, we'd like to see more uh, content. We'd like to see more interesting people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mo, thanks for handling this. Mo, um, thank you so much. I, I hope uh, I did a good job. You killed it. You did I, really well. Any more so. questions? Did we get through uh, uh, all of them? I I believe we did. Something you want to know about me that you don't know? Yeah, I mean. That's a difficult question. I, I, know, I, know, I know you quite well. Do you want to share something that you feel, you know, people that are listening want to... Um, like we covered family career, which is yeah, fine. Maybe on, uh, on, a, on a super personal level, um, people don't know this about me, but I lost my dad at the age of 21. Yeah. Um, and all my closest people around me uh, had their fathers at the time. 
Um, How did he pass? He passed from uh, lung cancer, smoking okay. cigarettes. All right. Um, and and of course, you know, after after seeing what he went through, I was like, I uh, I used to smoke the odd cigarette. I'm like, that's it, never again. But you know, for anyone who has lost a a, a parent or a father figure, uh, what I realized that it did to me is help me become more independent and realize that no one's going to save you over here. Uh, it helped me grow up, you know, and become a man to the best of my abilities and, and mature a lot. Um, so this is something that I uh, carried with me for a long time. I felt that, you know, losing my father at 21 was very young. Mm. So anyone out there, you know, who lost a parent at an even younger age, um, times are tough now. Uh, but that would only mold you to become a stronger person uh, as as you as you grow up. It's it's the hardest thing to do, uh, you know, trying to figure out your own path in life. And actually, what it taught me uh, was how to be, you know, there for my son as a, a, a as an example, as a leader. Like if I had my father till today, I don't think I would have been as good of a father as I am to Adam. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because because I lost it. So I see my son having it. So I just want yeah, you, every you, day you to count. You see yourself compensating for... Compensating for my loss in him. Okay. Like I want him to have, uh, you know, as I want him, I want to teach him as much as I can, even if he's only four or five, I want to teach him as much as I can because, you know, n not, not, not to make it deep or anything, but like, Make I wasn't deep. I wasn't guaranteed my father beyond the age of 63. Adam's not guaranteed to have me, you know, for we can't guarantee it. Absolutely. So not. it's it's down to me to instill the knowledge and show him the way and teach him, you know, the right morals and 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 you know what to expect out of life. So what's the best lesson you think you want to teach him? Uh to keep your word. Um uh not not, not everyone's going to want to have the best for you. Um, and, you know, choose your friends wisely. Uh, the number of friends have no connection with the quality, the of quality, friends. you know, yeah. I mean, I'd rather have two or three friends, uh, who I can, who I know will be there for me at any time than have 30 people, uh, who, you know, are just, we're in a WhatsApp group together, but you know, they don't mean much to me. So quality over quantity. I love quantity. our WhatsApp group. <laughs> Quality over quality over quantity. Can we do a selfie? Sure, sure, sure. Shall we wrap up first, or as you walk in? No, no. So, but by the way, this episode went so off piste. I love it. So this is Mo and I filming the one year anniversary episode. National Day special, right there, Mo. Beautiful. Signing off for the Mo. Well, you got to say this part. You got to say. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> Signing out for the Mosho podcast, the Saudi National Day special with my best friend in episode one, a great host who should have his own podcast. <laughs> episode one, Mr. Mohammed Maharik. Woohoo! Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank man. you. Love you, buddy. You are the best.